Hello and welcome, my name is Thomas McGee and in this video I just wanted to share with you guys a really quick tip on something that is easy to do but will make your websites load significantly faster. Okay, so in today's day and age, everybody, it seems, is on a some sort of mobile device, right? Everybody's on their smartphone or some on tablets. And we have significantly fewer people every single day who are relying solely upon a desktop or even a laptop computer in order to browse the web. Now, for a lot of these cases, specifically those people who are on smartphones, they're gonna be relying a lot on mobile data and not everybody has unlimited mobile data. Even the unlimited plans sometimes have caps and limitations on them. What this means for us as web owners is that it behooves us to ensure that our websites load as quickly as possible. And not only that, but the amount of data that we send for every single page load to make that as significantly small as we can get it is also really important. So I'm actually in the process right now of building out a squeeze page. And one of the things that I'm trying to do, every single image that I'm using within this squeeze page that I'm building, I'm running it through a tool called Tiny PNG. So Tiny PNG is a totally free service. And what it does is it enables you to compress, that is to make smaller or a smaller file size every single image you put through it. So you might be wondering why would I wanna do this? What's the significance of this? Well, when you're loading a web page, in essence, what you have to do is you have to load every single asset, every single resource that has been coded into a page, your browser, whether, whether it be on your phone, your tablet, or you know, even your smart TV, whatever you're using, whatever device is actually downloading that content has to download all of those images. Now, if you're on a phone and you're using your mobile data, the bigger and the more in number images that you're having to download, that's more data that's being sucked by that user. So that user, if they're going to your website and browsing around a whole bunch of the different pages, and you've got a whole bunch of big images on those pages, you're gonna eat up a lot more of their data. Not only that, but Google has started to take into their ranking algorithm uh, as a large factor is that loading time. So anything we can do to significantly decrease the amount of loading time it takes for a user to visit our webpage, the better. The good news is that the trick that I'm about to show you is extremely easy, it's simple to implement, and it's free. And best of all, if you have a WordPress website, a lot of what I'm gonna show you can be uh, completely automated. So it just makes the whole process a lot simpler. Okay, so let's go ahead and dive into it. So I'm currently at a website by the name of TinyPNG. So you can get there by just going to tinypng.com or you can also just Google TinyPNG. So let's take a look at how this works. Let's go ahead and go to a website called Pexels. And Pexels, you may have seen me reference this before. This is just a free stock uh, image website. So you can go in here and you can use any of these images that you want for your blog or for any websites that you're wanting to use. And people are constantly uploading uh, new images. So if you are somebody who has a blog and you have a lot of content that you're uploading on a regular basis, uh, it's a good idea to ensure that you have some sort of imagery in there, right? Because that imagery is just going to, you know, make that post look nicer, uh, everything else in between. So let's take a look here. What we're looking at is, let's turn on presentation assistant. There we go. What we're looking at here is a 4.8 megabyte file. Now, most people, what they would do is they would just upload this to their blog. But what that means is that every single time somebody uh, loads your blog homepage or your blog page that has this image embedded in there, is going to be loading a 4.8 uh, megabyte image along with that. That is on top of every other resource that you have on that page, such as other images, such as maybe an audio file or a video file. And that starts adding up really quickly. Uh, not only that, but another thing I did want to mention as well, something to be aware of, is that if you are uploading a whole bunch of images onto your website, like this that are 4.8 megabytes and let's say you've got 100 even a thousand posts on your site that's actually going to take up a lot of hard drive space 
on the server that's hosting your website, specifically if you're using something like WordPress. And what that means is that over time, your actual server costs, depending on who you're hosting with, could go up and it's just totally unnecessary. So let's go ahead and jump back over here to see how we can start to alleviate this issue. Okay, so what we've got here uh, is this image that we downloaded that's 4.8 megabytes. So let's see what we can do if we go ahead and drag this over onto tiny PNG and take a quick look at what this will do. Okay, so what we see here is that it has finished compressing and it has actually compressed this down 64%. So it's now only 1.7 megabytes. The problem still though, is that 1.7 megabytes is still pretty big. So let's go ahead and do something real quick. Let's go ahead and let's take this image and this process might be a little bit different on a PC than it is for a Mac, but what I just did is I just copied this image. I opened it in the image preview. I'm gonna go under tools, adjust size. And really 5,000 pixels is way too big. That's not really necessary to have an image that big that's just gonna display for the web. So I'm just gonna do 1800. That's probably plenty large enough. So what I've done now is I've actually resized this image. So uh, I made a copy, I've resized it. We can see here, not much of a difference because it still fills up most of the browser window as I'm previewing it. But let's go ahead and try one more time. Okay, so now we're gonna upload this image. Okay, and we see now after this little process I've followed, we've gone from 4.8 megabytes right here, all the way down to two, uh, 274.6K, so a small fraction of what it was before. This is more manageable. This for a big image or a larger image, display image for your website, uh, something like 274K is pretty manageable, that works. It's a significant difference from 4.8 megabytes, which means, as I mentioned, you're gonna have faster loading speeds, you're gonna take up less hard drive space and everything in between. So I would recommend following this whole process if you don't have a WordPress website, uh, this is the process to follow. However, let's say that you do have a WordPress website. So let's take a look at what we can do there. Okay, so I am just now in a sample WordPress website. This is just a blank install. So this is gonna look a lot different on your WordPress website, but it should have a lot of the same pieces. So it should look pretty familiar. So all we gotta do is jump on over here to our plugins. We're gonna click add new. And we're just gonna search for tiny PNG. We'll see it's gonna show up here first on the list when we're just gonna go ahead and click install and then click activate. All right, so once we've done that, now we can jump on over to settings and we'll see right here, we've got compress uh, JPEG and PNG images. Okay, so I have already gone through and connected my account to this. Uh, so what you're going to want to do is you're going to going to want to go to the uh, tiny PNG website and it's going to give you a link here that that goes over to tiny PNG. So I'm already logged in. So everything's good here. So what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go to tinypng.com slash dashboard slash API where they're going to give you an API key. You're just going to want to connect that. They're going to give you a field right here where you can fill that in. So you just fill that in and then that's gonna connect it to your account as we can see here. The reason is because for free, they're going to limit you to 400, or I should say, sorry, 500 compressions uh, so that uh, you're limited by how much you're actually compressing. They do have a plan in here as well. Uh, we can actually pay more for more compressions, but most of the time 500 is gonna be plenty. Okay, so let's go through some of the options we have here. And by default, you're just gonna wanna leave it checked to compress new images in the background. This just means that it's not gonna try and compress it as you upload it, just to give you a quick reference. Uh, what this is actually going to be doing, this plugin every single time that you upload an image to your media library uh, in your WordPress website, it's actually going to do the whole compression, compression routine that we just saw live and in the background. So you, it skips all of those steps, it automates them automatically for you so you don't have to do it manually. Okay, so some of the options here, compress new images in the background, 
Like I said, this is just gonna do it in the background. This is not going to slow down the process of uploading images to your media library. So it'll just make everything faster. If you select this option, which is uh, compress new images during upload, this will slow down the uploading process because it's going to upload the image, send the image to TinyPNG, try to compress it, send it back, and then put it in your uh, image library. It takes longer. Now, if this option does not work, if there is a plugin or a theme that you're using that gets in the way or has some conflicts, then you're gonna wanna try this as a troubleshooting technique. But nine times out of 10, this option is gonna work just fine. Okay, so now we've got image sizes and there's a good chance when you first install this plugin, it's gonna have all these checked. You don't really need to do that. Image, or I should say WordPress by default has a number of different sizes. So what it does is it gives you the original image, then it creates a copy that's a little thumbnail, it creates another copy that's this size and another copy that's this size. The reason for that is so that it can always use the right size image for the context in the theme that it needs to be used. So depending upon what theme you're using, there may actually be more or less of these. Okay, so I've unchecked all these because the theme I'm in right now doesn't really utilize these. Uh, and I've also unchecked this one. So I'm only compressing this one and this one. So that means that every single time, and this is something to be aware of for the number of compressions you have left each month, is that every single time you upload one image, it's gonna count as the number of compressions or the number of things you have checked here. So to kind of clarify that, if I upload one image, it's gonna make two versions and compress those two versions. So that counts as two compressions. So be aware that the more of these you have checked, the more compressions that will take as you are uploading images to your image library. Okay, and one last option we have here, which is really important, this is going to resize the original image. So you remember when we went in here and we opened this image and we went through it uh, and we resized it in preview? Well, the great news is that this option is gonna do that for you. It's gonna resize that original image. So it's not gonna be 5,000 pixels wide. It's going to be only a maximum of 2,000 pixels wide or 2,000 pixels high. Then these options here, we can just leave those the same and then we can just click save changes. Okay, and that's it. So that means TinyPNG is up and running. So let's take a look at how this works. So let's jump over to our media library and let's do a quick test. Remember, this is our big image. This is 4.8 megabytes. Okay, so now what we're gonna do is let's go ahead and upload that to our WordPress library. Okay, so that's uploaded and we're gonna see here that it's five megabytes, right? But remember, we made a setting in TinyPNG to do this compression in the background. So let's give it a couple of moments and then let's check back to see how big that image is. Okay, so I've waited about a minute. I'm gonna pop back in here now, click on this and you're gonna see now it's been compressed to 437K and that's the biggest version of the image. So uh, as you can see, it used that 2048 as the very longest side. So that's gonna be the width and then it's uh, resized by the correct aspect ratio to maintain the look and uh, the actual orientation of the photo. So significantly smaller, that's gonna cut down massively on your loading time. And as you can see, once we have that tiny PNG plugin set up, that whole process is automated. So now if I go over to my posts and I create a nice sample, then we can go ahead and add in here an image from our media library, select the one we uploaded. We can select the large size and we see here that it's this width. We'll go ahead and click. Actually, let's go ahead and make sure that's all set properly. Yep, it is. Click publish. There we go. And you see my images in there. Let's take a quick look here. If we go to uh, inspect element. And don't worry, you don't have to do this. I'm just doing this for the sake of uh, seeing the image size that we're currently using here. So in fact, let's just make it even simpler. Let's drag it to the desktop. And there you go. 359K, so a nice compressed image. And as you can see, and this is really important too, you see the image still looks beautiful, right? It's big, uh, it takes up a, a wide variety, you know, a wide amount of space on the page. 
and yet it still looks clean and crisp. Most people would not even see or notice a difference in the quality of this image, and yet you have significantly decreased the amount of file size it takes up, not only for the user to load it, but on your hard drive on your server as well. Okay, so let's take a look here, uh, back inside the admin. And let's take a look at one more option that you might want to consider as you are using TinyPNG. Oops, go to posts, or I should say media. You'll see now that TinyPNG has added this option called bulk optimization. So what we've covered thus far is great if you want to go through uh, and upload new images. So for all images moving forward, TinyPNG will compress them. But then you might be wondering, what about the option of compressing all the images that are already on my server? So let's say you're reaching, uh, you're, you're reach reaching the limit on your server hard drive space because you've got so many images. You can run this bulk op optimization and it will go through in the background and follow that exact compression uh, settings uh, that we have set up for the plugin across all the images in your library. Now, just note that yeah, again, you only have 500 compressions for free. So right now I'm just working on a test site which only has a couple images on there. Um, but if you have thousands of images or even hundreds of images, they may actually have a charge in here for you. So it may cost you to do that once, but from what I can remember, it's pretty reasonable, but it'll go through and it will automatically compress in the background all the images on the server. You can even go through and one of the options they have in here, you can go through and start compressing it and then you can stop it. So if you wanna just do pieces at a time, you know, until you reach 500 per month, you can do that as well. So it's a really powerful tool, uh, really quick tip. Uh, but what I wanted to do, I really wanted to share that with you guys today because I think it's gonna be, uh, it's gonna make a big difference, not only for you, but also for your users. And it's just so easy to set up, just install that plugin uh, and just start saving loading times for your users and hard drive space and costs for you in the long run. So as always, if you found this useful, hit that like button, subscribe if you're not already, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video.